I'd like to invite you to turn your Bibles now with me to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27, beginning at verse 20, uh, 62. Matthew 27, verse 62 to 28, verse 15. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that imposter said, while he was still alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as he can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting the guard. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there I will see they will see me. While they were going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. And when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said, Tell people his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And after this came to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the story of your resurrection. Especially on this day that we get to celebrate your resurrection, we thank you, Lord God, for your sacrifice. We thank you for these words that were recorded to remind us and to tell us of your resurrection. To know that death did not hold you. That you defeated both the grave, death, and hell. Lord Jesus, now as we study these words, we ask you to open our eyes to see you, open our ears to hear from you, and give us the courage to put into practice what we teach us this morning. For these things we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. This morning I've named, named our sermon, The Evidence for the Resurrection. And I have a twofold purpose this morning for us. The first purpose is, is to be equipped to know how to better answer the questions because there are some people out there sometimes who say that, well, there's no evidence for the resurrection. So I want us to equip you with that. But secondly, it's also to give glory to God and remember of how he rose from the dead and the awesome message that we have because of it. There's a question that sometimes goes out to what proof or evidence do you have? If you're a person who thinks very logically, you often will probably ask that question of, of something that's said or, or, or you hear about that has something has happened. 
I know I'm the kind of person who likes to ask that question too of, okay, where's, where's your citing of the source? Where's your evidence for your claim? Uh, I find often too some atheists who have asked me that question or I've heard ask other Christians that question, what evidence do you have for that? Well, it's good and important to look at the evidence that we have so we can understand and know how to defend the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. But also to reaffirm what we already know, that Jesus is God and that he died on the cross and he rose from the dead three days later. So we need to be aware of the evidence. Some will say, well, the Bible is an evidence, but <laughs> the problem with that is people do quote books sometimes and saying, well, science says this or scientists say that, and we don't, as Christians, we don't disregard science. We believe that God is the one who created science. After all, science is what we know. God has done all things that are natural and supernatural. So the argument that, while well, you use this book is not an argument against the evidence for God. But in the Bible, we have here evidence for Christ's resurrection, and it includes testimony, which we'll see here in a moment. In our passage this morning, there's three evidence, evidences that we see of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the first evidence is this. The religious leaders tried to cover the resurrection up. The, the religious leadership tried to cover up the resurrection. We see in two, pass, two parts in this passage, first in chapter 27, verse 62 to 65, and chapter 28, verse 11 to 15, the process that the Pharisees, the religious leadership, went through in wanting to cover up Jesus' resurrection. We see in 62 to 65 that they first of all come to, to the governor at the time, to, to Pilate, and says, you know, Jesus said these, these, weird, these weird words. He said that in three days, I'll rise from the dead. And, and so we want to make sure that this was bad enough the first time. Now, if the disciples go and steal the body and then say that Jesus is raised from the dead, it's going to be worse than the first time. And so we don't want to make sure we want to make sure that this doesn't happen, that his body can't be stolen. It shows right there that the religious leaders didn't believe Jesus, that he would rise from the dead three days later. So the Roman per leadership at the time there said to them, "You know what? You have you have a group of soldiers that can do this. Take them and secure the tomb as you see fit." So they did that. They. They went off with the guards, put a stone in front of the tomb, and sealed the tomb. Now, it's very important for us to realize and understand that the tomb was sealed. It would be too difficult for just a few men to break that seal and move that stone away. Not to mention the whole garrison of soldiers who were there. There were several guards there. Now, in some movies, it portrayed sometimes two or three soldiers standing over the tomb. But we can see in this passage that it was definitely more than three because later we'll see there are some who stayed while some who went to tell the religious leaders that the tomb was empty and Jesus was no longer there. So the Pharisees wanted to cover this up. But here's what happens. When Jesus rises from the dead, the soldiers are scared. And we really know the tomb was sealed. Some of the soldiers that we see in later passages in verse twenty in chapter twenty eight that some of the soldiers went back to the religious leaders and said, There's this huge earthquake and the stone rolled away, and there was this angel who was there, totally freaked us right out. And this angel told us that the and these women who came along told them that Jesus was no longer in the tomb, and sure enough the tomb was empty. And there's no possible way that these disciples could have stolen the body because we, we, we sealed the tomb. And then all of a sudden in this moment, the stone is rolled away and he's not there. So the Pharisee's solution is this. Okay, you know what? We'll pay you off. We'll give you some money and tell people that the disciples stole the body. And, and you know what? If, if the governor is upset with you, don't worry. We'll appease him. In other words, we're going to pay him off too. They tried to cover it up. We find that happens sometimes in our world, doesn't it? Sometimes we try to cover things up. We have seen that in politics sometimes where maybe the leader of a country tries to cover up a scandal they're part of 
or maybe in, in a group of community of people, we try to hide things that we, we want hidden uh, because we don't want what we've found out or we don't want the truth to be exposed of the situation. That's exactly what the Pharisees were doing here. They wanted to cover it up because they didn't want the truth to get out. So here's a few sub points here for, for this. First, it shows that the religious leaders were afraid of Jesus' prophecy. That's why they said, we want to seal the tomb. Then also, the stone was sealed. Again, that's a very important point. It wasn't just that there was a stone there. It was sealed completely. To mention the stone, though, too, it had to be a big stone. I don't know if you ever watched these Strongest Man events. They do these big feats of strength where some of them try to pull a big semi-truck, have a rope attached to their back, and they try to pull this big semi-truck along the way. Another event they have is called the Atlas Stone. They take this huge stone. It's a... Well, sometimes they're so big, it's a hard time for them to wrap their hands around. They're to lift the stone up and put it on top of a barrel in front of them. Now, the average person can't lift a stone like that. I know I certainly couldn't. Uh, this is outside of our house. We have a few river rocks to kind of guard, uh, protect, so we don't run over the, the gas meter accidentally. And, and these stones are pretty big stones, and I have a hard time picking up with these stones myself. If it's that difficult for most of us to carry a stone of... A stone, say, about this big. How is it possible for a small group of men to re remove a stone that covers an entire grave, and plus it being sealed? Next, also, soldiers were paid off for the lie. Again, that's evidence that the religious leaders were trying to cover up this sin. And lastly, the governor was paid off to overlook these are the four things that happened. That's the evidence that the Pharisees were trying to cover up the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's the first evidence we have, that the religious leaders were trying to cover up the truth that Jesus rose from the dead. The second evidence that we have that Jesus rose from the dead is that the women and the guards witnessed the opening of the tomb. In verse 1 through 7 of Matthew 28, we read the account of what happens. There's this earthquake, and all of a sudden, the stone is rolled away. And then all of a sudden, this angel appears, and it, f it frightens everyone there. Both Marys are there. They're there to come, and, and they wanted to prepare the body as it was in there, and they also wanted to mourn at the tomb. There's also the, this garrison of soldiers who were there to guard the tomb to make sure that no one could roll the stone away and steal the body. All of them were witness of this earthquake and the stone rolling away and this angel being there. Listen to these words from Matthew 28 again. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it catch that? The, so, the angel rolled the stone away during the earthquake and then sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. In other words, they were so afraid that they stopped in their tracks. They couldn't move. Have you ever been that afraid? So afraid that you couldn't move? If you ever experienced that, you know what that's like then, to be in such a state of shock that there's nothing you can do in that moment. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. As he said, Come, see the place where you lay. Here the angel not only sits on the stone that he rolled away during the earthquake, but he also tells the women, come and see. And the soldiers right there could have seen too that the tomb was empty. Here we have eyewitnesses of two women and a garrison of soldiers seeing that Jesus had risen from the dead.
in our courts, whenever there's been a crime committed, there, there needs to be a number of witnesses that give witness to the situation. Otherwise, the, the, the charges thrown out of court. We see that often in courts. If there's not enough witnesses and the witnesses aren't truthful and aren't believed, then the person gets off of the crime that they committed. The same is true in this situation too. Here we have witnesses of two women and a bunch of soldiers who could testify to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the Apostle Matthew here is recording for us what those women said and what they experienced. And they even shared too with the disciples that these soldiers were here too, that they witnessed it too. So here's what they witnessed again, as we just saw, review this again. The women and the guards witnessed the stone rolling back by the earthquake. Again, it's the angel during this earthquake who's rolling the stone away. They witness this. They see this happen right in front of their eyes. Next, the guards tremble. Such fear they could not move. And then the angel declares that Jesus has risen from the dead. He is resurrected. And then gives instructions to the women, come and see what has happened here. Come see that the tomb is empty, and then go tell the disciples. The soldiers and the women both heard the angel, as we'll see in a moment, because the soldiers going to, to tell the religious leaders of what they witnessed too. We have eyewitness testimony of Jesus' resurrection. He was no longer in the tomb, but had risen from the dead. This is a wonderful thing to know. That here's evidence, eyewitness testimony, that Jesus rose from the dead. So again, the religious leaders tried to cover up the resurrection, but then the women and the guards are eyewitnesses that Jesus rose from the dead. There's a third evidence that we see in this passage that Jesus rose from the dead. And that is Jesus appeared before the women. Here's a wonderful part of the story too. Not only did the women see the angel and and see the stone being rolled away and the empty tomb and the guards seeing that too, but Jesus also appears before the women on their way back to see the disciples and tell them that Jesus had raised from the dead. This is an amazing thing. Now, a lot of people say that in that time period that women weren't, their testimony was, was useless. But here Jesus chose to appear before these women first. It is a wonderful testimony that God sees everyone equally important. Jesus chose to appear before the women. This was not a ghost. This was not a figment of their imagination. It was physically the Lord Jesus raised from the dead. How do we know this? Well, we see this because of Jesus walking before them, but met before them, but also he touched, they touched his feet and worshiped him. Listen to those words of verse 9 and 10 of chapter 28. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. <laughs> this is a, this is just as if it was a nonchalant day. Hey, hello, how are you doing? Nice, beautiful day, isn't it? Jesus says to them, Greetings. Hello. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. This could not be a mirage or a ghost or a figment of their imagination if they touched the feet of Jesus. So right here we see they could physically touch Jesus and they worshipped him. In that moment when they realized that it truly was Jesus and they touched him, they worshipped him, gave glory to him, gave honor that was due to his name. Then it continues in verse 10. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell your brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is a wonderful thing to know and to see. These women witnessed Jesus. Mary, both Marys, witnessed Jesus' resurrection, but also was able to touch him physically and worship him. The passage says here that they were afraid but also filled with the joy at the same time. Talk about a confusing emotional time, eh? <laughs> to, to be in fear, but also be in joy at the same time. 
what an incredible experience that would have been to see Jesus in that first few moments of his resurrection. This is truly wonderful. Here we have the eyewitnesses of the women. They physically touched Jesus. But not only that, we also have the witnesses of, of the, the guards. In the worst verses following, it says that some, again, not all of them, some of the guards went to the religious leaders and told them what they had seen. And here, the Pharisees wanted to cover it up, as we mentioned before. The guards and these women witnessed Jesus raising from the dead. And these women were able to take hold of his feet and worship him right in his presence right there. This is an awesome recording of Jesus' resurrection. That Jesus died and rose from the dead and appeared before these two women. And these soldiers witnessed the resurrection of Jesus too. I, we don't know if, we, if the soldiers saw Jesus in this moment or not, but we do know they witnessed the opening of the tomb and the tomb empty and the angel. I wonder what the Pharisees must have thought, even though they wanted to cover it up still, pay off the guards and pay off the governor. But still, what they must have been thinking, could this Jesus really have raised from the dead? We understand later in the book of Acts that the Pharisees, not the Sadducees, but the Pharisees believed that there was the resurrection. Some of them started to follow Jesus as well because of the testimony of these guards and of G and of these women that Jesus rose from the dead. Death could not hold him. Death could not keep him. Jesus conquered both sin, death, and the grave. Here's the evidence that we see that Jesus did raise from the dead. It's just not a nice feel-good story. It's not a story necessarily with a good ending, although it is a good ending. It is a true story that Jesus died on the cross and three days later, Resurrection Sunday, he rose from the dead. The evidence is there. It was tried to be covered up by the religious leaders. The guards and the women saw the empty tomb and heard from the angel and saw the stone roll away. And the women were able to see Jesus and touch him. This is great evidence that shows that Jesus did rise from the dead. This is the truth. Did you know that you have a testimony? That you have a powerful testimony to tell people that Jesus rose from the dead? Because you can tell of how he has changed your life. In addition to sharing this evidence when people ask the question of, or say that Jesus never, never did raise from the dead. We can give this evidence, but also talk about how Jesus has changed our lives. How we understood that we were sinners and that there was nothing that we can do to be forgiven our sins. But we experienced Jesus' forgiveness. We can tell our story, just like these women told their story of seeing Jesus raised from the dead. I want to give, give you two points of action this morning. First is this, believe these facts. Believe that Jesus did rise from the dead. Believe that these women and these soldiers did see him rise from the dead. Believe the evidence because it is true. Second point of action is to give praise to Jesus for his, this act of love. He died for our sins. He loved us so much. He told, took the penalty of the entire world of all the sin in the world and placed it upon himself and died and three days later rose from the dead. Again, God's word tells us, no greater love than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Jesus laid his life down for us. And here in his word, we have the evidence that he did rise from the dead. I want to give you a warning, though, this morning. If you do not heed these words, you will miss the facts of the resurrection. And you will miss the wonderful message of salvation. See, Jesus loves you, and he died for you. He knew before he created the entire universe, he was going to create you, and you were going to sin. You were going to disappoint him. You were going to fall short and, and miss his target of moral, of, of moral rightness. But he still chose to create you, 
and he still chose to die on the cross for you. If you don't heed these words, you're going to miss that wonderful message. And you will miss the gift of salvation. And you'll live your life in complete destruction. So I encourage you then to hear the blessing of this. That if you do heed these words, you will then receive the gift of salvation. You will know that you can have true peace with God. That you don't have to face an eternity in hell for your sins. But you can face eternity with Jesus in heaven. For those of us who are Christians, if we heed these words, we will want to go out and share this good news with those who are lost too. Without fear and boldness, because we know that Jesus lives and he loves us. We don't have to fear death or fear what anyone else will do to us, because we know that we have an eternity in heaven. So we must, as Christians, go and share this good news and receive the blessing that God has for being faithful to his calling in our lives. Don't wait. If you don't know Jesus, he is going to return someday. Be ready by receiving his gift of salvation. And use this information to better share the gospel and to praise the one who loved you so much and died and rose from the dead for your sins. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for these words you have given to us this evidence you have given us of your resurrection. Lord Jesus, you are a wonderful and awesome God that you would take our place for our sins and then raise three days later and offer us the gift of salvation. Lord, we thank you for the witness of these guards. Even though they lied later, they were still a witness to the religious leaders that you had risen from the dead. We thank you for the testimony of Mary, Magdalene and Mary. Lord, we thank you that they chose to be obedient to you too in that moment and go to the disciples and share that you had risen from the dead. Lord God, we thank you for this testimony of your word to us, of you and your love and your payment for us. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love. You are an awesome God. That not only did we make the mistake, we, we caused sin, but you chose to make the penalty for it. You gave the solution for it. Jesus, you are a wonderful and awesome God. I will give you praise and glory. Lord, we thank you for this day, the Resurrection Sunday, that we have to praise you in your name. Lord, may we treat every day as a Resurrection Sunday, a day of giving glory to you and serving you in faithfulness and love because of your love for us. Lord Jesus, we praise you and thank you. Amen.